Greetings, everyone. Come, welcome back to the last director Q&A session. This is our great pleasure to welcome uh, director Chen Xingyi, a singing Chen, one of the most active, versatile and multidimensional filmmakers in Taiwan today. Um, her works are known for being highly uh, stylized and fast paced with uh, focuses on issues in art, culture and social issues. Last week, we screened 10 of her most important films. This, I would say, is the biggest uh, director series that we have ever held. Based on the subject matters and themes of these films, we have divided them into two major categories. One focuses on social concern and the other on art in focus. So um, the six films included in the social concern, Shehui Guanhuai's are Bundle 2000, God Man Dog 2007, The Clock 2011, The Pig 2013, Body Talk uh, 2017, and A Real Meal the same year. The four included in the Arts in Focus, Yi Shu Jiao Dian, include uh, Years Switch Off and On, 2011, The Walkers, 2014, Mountain Spirits, 2015, and The Moving Tent, 2018. We have shown her critically acclaimed first feature film, for example, Bundled, La. You can see the uh, posters at her uh, background, which was shot on 16 millimeter camera. At the age of only 27, she received numerous awards because of this film, such as Best Film and Best New Directors, both in Taiwan and also internationally. In 2007, her film Got Man Dog, Liu Lang Shen Go Ren, was again widely praised, nominated, or invited uh, to more than 30 film festivals worldwide, from Berlin International Film Festivals uh, to Busan uh, International Film Festival and Freiburg uh, Film Festival in Switzerland. So you can then you see the uh, amazing uh, uh, documentary, The Walkers. It is another important work of hers. It took her 10 years to shoot, uh, to recall the legend Lin Dang's uh, theater, Wu Go Wu Dao Ju Chan. The Walker again won her countless best uh, documentary awards worldwide. So for an, such a, a quite a rare uh, uh, example, because it's an art documentary, so it shouldn't attract a lot of attention, I mean, in terms of box office return, but actually it has created a rarely seen case of box office success. We can see she, if you look at all those different kind of film, uh, uh, works she, she has uh, done, um, you can see she works on a wide range of subject matters, such as homeless people, poverty, aging, Alzheimer, a social movement, theater, dance, and art. She also covered various genres from documentaries, short films to uh, full length feature films. So no matter what kind of subject matter or genre, all her films demonstrate a strong sense of human dignity, sincerity, and idealism. She uses her camera to provide social critique about inequality, inequality, poverty, uh, aging, and actually the essence of beauty in life. Before we start today's Q&A session, I would like to thank our funders, the Ministry of Culture, the Cultural Division at the TRO in the UK, and also of course, um, uh, Taiwan Film and Audio Visual Institute for their support. Without their generous uh, funding, 
and continuous uh, backing, it would not have been possible to launch such an ambitious project. So I would also need to remind you, this is a recorded session. Uh, the chat function is open now. Uh, please make sure you are, uh, post your question, uh, um, you know, and and uh, join in the, the conversation. OK, then Xiao Yi will uh, collate the question and, and present them to Director Chen. Of course, uh, you can also see Josh is, uh, is, is on standby. He's our interpreter. He will help out all the um, translation. Um, May I ask you to just put your uh, uh, hands together, put your uh, microphone on, just say a big uh, welcome to Director Chen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as the chair, I would uh, I have the privilege of ask uh, the first two questions. Thank you very much. And I will ask the question first in Chinese, so to allow the director to have some time to digest it, and then in English. Uh, Chen Daoyan, 欢迎。我会先用中文问，然后再用英文问。所以，呃，非常欢迎你。我们很荣幸能够邀请你，呃，跟我们分享一下你的电影人生。所以，呃，作为一个呃呃今天的呃主持人 ，OK， 我先问两个问题，然后。我们的观众会开放给观众问问题 ，OK？ 所以第一个问题，陈导，在你的电影里头啊，有两个非常重要的平行的主题，一个是台湾的表演艺术，当然也有呃视觉艺术，还有一个是对于社会议题的一种观察跟批判，这两者可以说是你电影创作里头非常重要的主轴。可不可以请你稍稍阐述一下这两个主题为什么对你这么重要？那么你又是希望表达什么？嗯，呃，我我用英文问一下。OK， 呃、uh, ，there seem to have two major uh elements in your films. One is the um uh uh the focus on Taiwan's performing art. The other is is a kind of social critique. Uh, and, and observation of Taiwan, uh, Taiwan's uh, social issues. Those two major themes in your film, could you elaborate a little bit why they are so important to you and what do you want to express? Thank you, Dao Yan. This may be related to my film's training, because I'm not a film student. I'm a college student. 啊，然后是在呃大学的时候到一个呃台湾很重要的独立制片导演黄明川导演那边去工作，所以所关于所有电影的技术的成分，呃都是在那个 studio 学习的。然后因为黄导演那个时候呃大量的接触台湾的前卫艺术嘛，大概在九零年代的时候，呃台湾刚解严不久。那解严不久，呃，等于说整个文化圈，它整个呃，不管是地上地下或所有的文化，是整个是呃，因为解严的关系，整个是撞击在一起，有一个很很强大的能量这样。所以那个时候跟着黄明川导演接触了非常大量的呃前卫艺术家或者是艺术作品，然后呃，等于说在那个时候也呃开始慢慢自己大学的时候就开始写一些剧本啊，想要做创作这个部分。那所以在这个过程里面呢，等于说，呃呃，除了我自己原本可能就呃会关心一些比较是呃底层的人物的生活啊，或者是一些小人物的状态以外，也同时有一条轴线是很关心呃，就是不管台湾的那个时候可能还没有分得那么清楚是表演艺术啊，或者是呃视觉艺术啊，或声音艺术啊，或各种艺术的分门别类还没有这么的。呃，就是这么的严谨的分开，因为整个文化圈是整个爆炸的在一起的状态，对，所以呃，就等于说这两个轴线在那个时候已经慢慢成型了。嗯 ，Thank you. Um, so Director Chen's answer to this first question, uh, was partly to say actually that she started out in university. Um, she didn't she didn't read film at university. She was at, she was in the advertising. Department uh, advertising was her major at university, but <clears throat> her first experience of 
uh, of working in film was with a director called uh, Huang Mingchuan, who was a, a, an important director in Taiwan. So in, in his studio, that's where director Chen uh, started to learn her craft. And in the 1990s, following the, the, um, the opening up of Taiwan, the end of martial law, uh, at the end of the 80s. So in the 90s, then, director Chen was explaining how uh, this new freedom which came about had a huge impact on the arts where underground art overground art um performing audio visual art it all kind of came crashing together in this big mix of people exploring um exploring art and exploring freedom at the, at the same time and that was something which made a big impact on her because uh, it was such a new scene and a fresh scene and it hadn't, it hadn't actually started to to separate into different spheres yet um while at the same time something that uh director chen says was important to her was also taking note of some of the people that society had forgotten about or people at the lower end of society uh, some of the the kind of the left out people and um and actually then film was something that while uh she was saying, I think while she was still at university, she started to write scripts herself. So despite reading advertising in university, actually, she started to write her own scripts quite early on already. Uh, and then and then through the experience with Huang Ming Tran, started to gain that um, filmmaking experience as well. Then, <laughs> 进入电影圈的时候国际影展上面获得了一些奖项奖啊或者是获得一些关注之后或者是我有兴趣的那些艺术的活动我都还是持续在关注这样然后就偶然的机会下就先拍了林立珍老师跟有一个舞踏叫琴卡诺口就是帐篷剧里面有出现的一个舞踏家日本他是日本人然后琴
director Chen really struggled with. And she said she felt like, well, if Taiwanese aren't going to watch Taiwanese films, what's the point in, in being a director? What's the point in carrying on making movies? And that was something which for her caused a real challenge uh, to, to think about her future. And she said at that time, she actually felt quite lost. Um, and something that came out of that was that throughout that period, she had carried on uh, observing other artists, other creators uh, in, in Taiwan and, and other, other teams, other um, events as well, even uh, artistic events. And that led her to think about the questions of, well, where do, where do these other artists get their inspiration and, and, and where does their creativity come from? Uh, and that, that led her down the road of documentary making to actually try to enter into the life of other, other creators, other artists, to, to discover what their life is like and what their, uh, how their creativity is birthed, you know, how their work actually comes about. Um, so that was where her, her, um, her first documentary work came, which was documenting Ling, Ling Lijun, and also she was mentioning another artist from Japan. Uh, yeah, so that's that's where these these two uh, social social conscience and uh, arts performing arts those kind of two streams really came from in the beginning. 然后我觉得不管刚刚老师有问到说关注的主题嘛在我拍艺术家的时候为什么要拍这么多年的一个原因也是我想要找到他们属于他们的一个很基本的那个东西是什么因为搞不好艺术作品会变就是他可能每隔一阵子他的风格或许会变他的作品可能有好有坏有各种
。OK， 我讲完了。<笑>谢谢<笑> ，Thank you、uh,。OK， 呃、uh, ，It's very clear。Thank you very much。So maybe I can ask the second question。So 第二个问题，嗯、um, ，陈导也知道，我们这一次其实是在一个大框架下，就是台湾后新潮电影系列里头考量，呃，这一代的台湾电影的发展。那你当然是最呃特别的，因为嗯、呃，我们发现。大部分都是男性，所以作为一个女性导演，在这样一个呃呃承先启后思考那个前面所谓新新浪潮电影的那个时代的人，并没有太多的呃呃女导演可以可以参考。那么你觉得有没有受到这个新浪潮电影的影响？呃，你对于这？你对于他们的电影呃呈现会不会觉得是呃比较男性的呃呃呃出发呃男性的观点？你是怎么样可以？你认为你自己是怎么样走出自己的路？呃，我我问一下英文，非常简单 ，sorry。呃 ，as the title of the series uh suggests, um you know we are trying in this in the last two years we try to trace the cinematic trajectory. Of the post new wave uh, uh, cinema, so in Taiwan, so、um, among the post new wave generation director, I think you are quite unique because,、uh, for one, you are a female director, and、uh, um, do you feel that you are detached from that tradition,、uh, or have you been uh, uh, influenced by them?、Um, there's no such thing as a role model for you. So how did you manage? To, you know, develop your own style. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I could come back and continue to talk about my development of the film technology in the nineteen nineties. That's what I just said. The nineties. That time, actually, Taiwan. I just said Taiwan. The female film workers are very few. They are very rare to see. 然后，尤其当时，其实大部分拍电影的状态都还是，比如说中影啊，或者是一些呃电影的比较大的制片公司在拍这样。所以，呃，如果说我自己觉得，如果我没有去黄明川导演那里工作的话，我不可能在一九九九年就有办法自己组一个 team， 用很独立制片的方式在拍这部片，用十六厘米拍，在当时几乎是不可能的。就等于说，呃，其实，呃，我可能不知道大家，呃。呃，知不知道台湾当时的状态是，呃，比如说，呃，像我现在拍片，比如说我的导演组、我的摄影组、我的灯光组、我的收音组、我的各个组别是为了这部电影而而在一起的。那这个是比较是传统的电影工业的制作方式嘛？但是黄明川导演他那里不是，他是自己训练人，所以他的摄<咳>影师、收音师、灯光师所有的部门剪接从头到尾全部都是他 studio 自己的人。所以，我像我在黄明川导演的工作室，我要我我从制片的工作，从美术的工作、摄影、灯光、剪接，所有部门的工作我都得要学，然后我要能够很有机的去补那个位置。所以等于说，在那个时候我才有办法呃接触到很很很扎实的一个技术上的训练。那这个训练对我来说太重要了，因为当时几乎没有呃台湾女性导演呃很少很少的状态下。呃，我才有办法，就是也自己组一个 team， 然后都是很年轻的人，然后这个 team 就是从前面开始 run 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 到后面，就是一个 team 在 run 这样。Okay, so, um, Director Chen was explaining that in the in the 1990s in Taiwan, there were pretty much no women in film at all in terms of filmmaking, uh, and The way she was explaining, actually, the way that films were produced was that generally it was always the big companies that were making films, and the the camera team, the lighting team, the audio team would all be brought in to make that particular project.、Um, but in her case, working with the director Huang Mingchuan at his studio,、uh, he did things slightly differently in that he、uh, brought his own people in. He had Kind of in in-house teams for for audio, for visual, for for camera,、um, for set, for all all of the, basically the whole lot. And、uh, 
being involved then in that studio, that meant that director Chen had to learn every part of filmmaking. She was involved in every single department and actually got to see how each one worked. And what that meant for her was that it was an opportunity to kind of from the top right down to the bottom to learn about how films are made and have the experience then that when uh, when when she came to make the movie bundled she was able to bring her own team together of of young people and she knew exactly how to organize the team and, and what needed to be done in each different area because she had already had that experience in the Hongming Tran studio so for her that was um uh a, a real opportunity, a real boost, because uh, otherwise, to be a female director in, in that era was was next to impossible. So, uh, 刚刚讲到，呃，刚刚老师讲到的一个独特性，就是我是一个女性的这个独特性。我自己觉得我有双重的独特性，一个是女性，就是我是一个女生，然后另外一个独特性，我觉得就是独立制片这一块，以及跨跨纪录片或者是。像我现在或许做 VR， 或者是有做一些其他的展演的部分、剧场的部分，比如说参与到呃，就是 Moving Tent， 就是大帐篷的剧场工作里面。那这个让我保有一个我不在核心的一个边缘，就是呃，这样讲或许很奇怪，但是我自己还是觉得我我处在台湾电影圈的一个边缘的状态。那这个边缘是电影圈，因为现在。呃，自从呃，可能呃，文化发展到一个程度以后，它分门别类就会越加明显嘛。就是这是电影圈，这是剧场圈，这是表演艺术圈，这是什么圈？它各个圈好像会越明显。那、呃、我自己是觉得，我有一点不固定在某个圈，我并不在电影圈的核心里面，然后我是游走在这个圈的边缘里面。那这个边缘性让我自己觉得。呃，我可我可能在我的电影里面，或者是不管是纪录片或剧情片里面，这个边缘性是一直存在的。So in in terms of um uh something which makes director Chen unique, she was saying actually there's she she feels there's two particular areas. So of course, being a female director, um especially starting back when she did was was something that was uh pioneering in Taiwan, but it also uh. Being an independent director is was and is something which um, marks out director Chen, and and she was saying the fact that she exists almost on the fringe of the the film circle, as it were, uh, because she will cross over um, whether it's between film and documentary or VR or with live theatre effects and things like that.、Um, It, it's something which she finds she's able to, to cross over boundaries quite easily.、Um, whereas she, she was saying that you know as as culture and as cultural industries develop to a certain level, then each each area starts to separate、uh, and and have more borders between them. So you know this is film and this is documentary, this is、uh, theatre and this is. Performance art. This is me,、uh, and actually, she she doesn't fall into a specific category and fit in it.、Uh, she's kind of on the fringe of all of those, and actually, for for her, that's a, a real advantage, a, a really a real unique spot. So, uh, for me, uh, in my presence, there is an influence. Of course, Taiwan's film directors definitely influence me very much. That is, Hou Xiaoxian, the director, and Yang Dechang, the director, and Cai Mingyang, the director. 就是在我等于说学生时代或或呃比较早期刚出来拍片的时候，等于说会大量接触到他们的电影嘛，这个绝对是有影响的。但是呃，与其说这个是一个绝对的影响，我觉得倒不如说是当时的台湾文化圈整个是爆炸的状态，那个爆炸给我的影响是整体的，呃，包含比如说侯孝贤导演。呃，也有里面，或者是早期的新电影里面很多都有，比如说黄明川，呃，黄黄春明作家的小说改编啊，或者是之类的，就是这些，比如说黄春明的小说或陈映真的小说，这些属于比较有人文关怀的小说，也会大量影响到我。就等于说那个时候，呃，对我的影响不只是台湾新电影的部分，因为台湾新电影也跟台湾的小说或台湾各个文化圈也都有关系。那等于这些是整体的影响的。我我我如何拍电影的所有的一切这样
So in terms of being influenced by Taiwanese new wave cinema, um, director Chen says, yes, of course, that that is something which has influenced her deeply, uh, whether it's films from uh, Ho Xiaoxian and Tai Ming Liang and, and directors from that generation. But even more than that, going further than that, uh, is the actual cultural explosion, uh, as director Chen described it, of the 1990s, of the post martial law era. Um, and actually, it's it's that kind of eruption of, of this cultural development and this newfound freedom of expression in, in art and in culture that um, was like a, a um, an all around influence on on her as a as a person and then of course as a director. So um, so so for her, you know, new wave cinema was actually part of this, and that, and it was just one part of this. But also, you know, there was there was new literature and and new books and new performing arts, and actually it was the whole spectrum of that that influenced her on a on a, a deeper and a broader level than than just the new wave cinema. 所以比如说可能刚刚还有提到就是比如说杨德昌导演或者是侯孝贤导演他们都改编自这两位小说家对我来说也影响非常深的就是黄春明的小说跟陈英珍的小说那他们的里面的都是属于比较对于人文的关
liked and has continued to uh, to, to try to do in her own work. So, so for her, it's something of that merging of different spheres, that cooperation between different areas of art, different fields of art, um, which she she sees as um, something which influenced her back in in that generation. But she's continued to this day to to continue. 对，所以呃，就是刚刚讲的是一些影响嘛。那对于女性的这个部分呢，就是呃，当然那个时候可以可以有的女性拍电影的楷模非常少啊，就是 model 非常少。那当然后来我觉得我在等于说也在林丽珍老师的身上找到一点创作的能量，就是她虽然不是拍电影的，可是因为创作的本质是非常相像的。所以等于说，我我有点从林立珍老师在做创作的身上找到了我自己能够继续拍电影的一个力量，这样。So in terms of role models, Director Chen was saying, um, yes, despite the fact that there weren't other female directors at the time, she didn't have, you know, exact role models to look to in in the term in the area of filmmaking, but actually she took a lot of inspiration from, uh. Ling Lijun and and her creativity and while it might be a different field from um, from directing, actually just that um, ability to, to to keep going to be creative and to pioneer in in a field of art is something which has encouraged and inspired director Chen to to keep going as a director herself. 然后，其实在我大学的时候，等于说在九零年代那个时候，性别运动也刚起来嘛。所以，呃，其实那个时候也有非常，呃，在大学时候啦，也有受他们的影响，有一种非常激进的，呃，当时有非常激进的想法，因为那个时候，呃，等于说各个各个社会的阶层都在松动嘛，啊，然后，呃，可能有，可能当然台湾有有有有省级种族的这个东西，然后也有阶级，也有也有政治上很多很多的东西都在松动。那当时我自己会觉得，好像都要解决了什么阶级的问题，才能够关注到性别这件事情。等于说，在当时也是呃，嗯，虽然性别这个议题是我所关注的，哈，但是在那样的状态下，好像有一种觉得，呃，非得要革命才有可能，呃，谈论到性别这件事情，因为性别会被摆在比较后面。那后来我自己当然我没有从很激进，那时候觉得那时候写了一些比较很激进的呃比较是动画脚本，比如说一个一个女人自己把身上的的的任何的任何的呃器官给切割了，就是比较是很呃实验性的一个动画脚本吧。呃、那个时候写一些关于这个，可是后来等于说还是从最后还是从一个人的本质去呃看待这件事情，所以。呃，在我的片子里面，可能没有很多是，比如说很明显的，就是这个是在讲一个呃女主角是一个女性或什么，可是，在电影里面，等于说比较强大的、有能量的一个角色，通常都会是女性这样。嗯、um, ，So then, director Chen has has gone on to develop her answer to, to say how. When she was at university in the 1990s, because the whole society was in flux, whether it was in politics, uh, culture, arts, class, gender, um, so many of these issues were all kind of colliding together, and and there was lots of new thought coming out. Um, what director Chen was was saying was that actually uh, to talk about Gender. I think she, she was saying actually what almost was needed was to have a revolution first, uh, to then be able to really focus on the issue of gender. So, in her movies, um, then it, it's not very direct or very obvious the, the the topic of of gender in the way it's discussed. It's not something that she's uh, really approached in a very obvious way.、Uh, and she did say on the side that.、Um, Previously, she had written kind of script for like an animation, which which was very direct、uh, about a, a female who cut off her female body parts、uh, and kind of exploring what 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 is female in that area. But、um, but actually, in her movies, what she is chosen to do is to take the the much less direct route and and doesn't 
approach the topic of gender in such an obvious way, but uh, in her movies, when you know, if there is a strong character with a a, a really um, quite a forceful role, actually, often she, that character will be a woman, uh, will be female. So, uh, so she does challenge gender stereotypes in in that way, but it's just it's not always direct and obvious. Thank you. Um, maybe Shao, you can come in. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jin Now, uh, I think the uh, first question is from Andy. So if you would like to uh, post questions, um, that would be great. Thank you. Um, so Director Chen's already talked about uh, working across fiction film and documentary filmmaking. And um, scholars and critics often draw a very sharp distinction between these two forms of filmmaking. But because um, Dr. Chen works across both, I wonder how she thought about the relationship between documentary and fiction, whether she saw them as distinct or whether she saw them as a kind of points on a continuum. If she could just say a bit more about that, please. Thank you. Shall we or or Josh? Sure. Okay. Yes, please. Um. So, 刚刚 Andy 在问的是说，呃，纪录片跟跟电影，跟电影故事的，就是常常会有一个很清楚的分别，就是不同的领域，然后很很多呃，可能旁观者会说。这这两个东西是完全不一样的，但是因为你两两个都会做，不管是电影故事或是纪录片，其实你都会拍，所以你你觉得这两种的关系是怎么样？那你会呃怎么看待纪录片跟电影的这个差别跟跟分别？嗯，呃呃，我自己觉得。呃，比如说我在拍这个《我叫阿明啦》这一部片，呃，我做了大概一年的田野调查，就是呃，跟跟呃，就是台台北看得到的一些呃，就是街友、流浪汉，会有一些交成做做朋友，呃，交就是等于说问他们一些呃他们的生活状态，或者是等于说做田野做做了一年多的时间，那这个这个东西是持续的。那等于说，我从呃那些田野调查里面去找到属于这个片子他想要讲的话，好，然后在我，在我呃写了第一稿剧本的时候，其实非常的写实，因为现在的现在的呃之后最后的呈现有一些魔幻写实的部分嘛，没有那么全部的写实，但是在一开始第一稿的时候是非常写实的。那我的团队就问我说：“既然那么写实的话，你为什么不去拍纪录片？拍纪录片就好了，为什么一定要拍电影？就是要写剧本这样。”那我大概想了这件事情，想了半年的时间，就是我为什么非得用剧情片而不用纪录片来拍摄这个题材？那我后来自己觉得说，因为我要讲的一个是人的生存状态，那人的生存状态就会呃牵涉到体制的问题。那如果是用呃纪录片去拍摄的话，你再怎么样去拍。你呈现到的就是他们现在的状态，你只能用，呃，你只能用，呃，呃，呃 ，O S 或旁白的方式去把体制的部分给凸显出来或讲出来，这样你没有办法拍出那个体制，或者说现在到底出了什么问题。所以后来我才决定说用，比如说记录，呃，剧情片的方式，等于说用魔幻写实的部分，你才有可能凸显这群人他们现在面临的东西是什么。以及现在体制的荒谬在哪里 ？So, um, using bundled her first movie as an example, what director Chen is saying about the um the, the connection between fiction and documentary was actually that <clears throat> before she started to shoot the movie bundled, she spent an entire year um researching. Homeless people in in Taiwan, and actually getting to know some of them, coming alongside some of them, trying to learn about their life and the issues that they faced in life, to to actually get a proper proper idea and a proper background for what she wanted to then say through the film. Um, 
and the first script, the first draft script that she had, and as they started to shoot, um, was so realistic that actually members of her team then asked, you know, what, what's, what's the point in making a movie out of this? It may as well be a documentary because it's so real, real to, so true to life. Um, and that's something which director Chen said she thought about for at least six months, this question, you know, maybe I should just make it documentary. But actually what it was that persuaded her to, um, to, to carry on making it as fiction was in order to be able to actually portray uh, some of the some of the challenges, some of the problems, some of the the, the things that uh, homeless people come up against in, in in the clearest way that she could. Because as a documentary, she would still only be able to the closest she could get essentially is as a fly on the wall to to, to show what, what you know what's happening day by day. Uh, whereas telling the story, she's able to actually represent even if it's real life events to, to, to rep represent them in a clearer way that um, brings the the audience almost closer in a more emotional way uh, in, into this whole topic, this whole subject. Um, so in that sense, as, as an example, then that's that's what she's saying. It, it's a good example of how documentary and fiction have, have merged in, in her work. 所以我自己覺得說我是用拍紀錄片的方式在拍劇情片用拍劇情片的方式在拍紀錄片 So um, what, what director Chen wants to do almost is to use the, the, the method for making a documentary to make a movie and use the methods for making a movie to make a documentary uh, and, and mix them together. That's, that's what she, she does and likes to do. 舉例來說我知道他在什麼時候會做什麼事情然後他演出前會寫心經他什麼時候會走出他的什麼地方然後他會有什麼反應幾乎已經在多年的觀察底下這個角色已經存在在我的腦子裡面了我知道他每天會做什麼我知
she just happened to get that particular shot. It was that she already knew this particular character, knew what his daily habits were, knew what he was going to do, and therefore was able to to kind of script his story um, into the story that she wanted because she already knew how the real how the real character lived their life, and therefore she could kind of anticipate in her mind what the the documented character is going to do and and capture that in a in a in the story that she wanted. 对，所以所以呃，等于说，在不管是等于说在呃纪录片里面，呃，我用的方式就是等待吧，啊，就是等待，等待，等待到一个呃摄影机在那里等，等待到这个镜头我必须拍了，啊，就是我不做任何的干预，就是我不会干预他要做任何的事情，可是我用等待的方式，等到类似像剧情片的的那个 moment 的发生。但是在剧情片这边的时候，等于说我也是用一个比较是长期观察的方式去把它写进去。等于说在剧情片的时候，我是用一个呃，等于说呃，就是刚刚类似长期的填掉，你会知道有些 moment 是你必须要呈现的，然后用写的把它写进去。但是它是立基于真实的，嗯、所以两个东西都在寻找一个，我觉得都是一个比较是所谓的真实到底是什么这件事情嘛。In terms of documentary, then uh, the the way that director Chen captures the the, the particular um, scenes that that she wants is by waiting, uh, and so by getting to know this character, knowing what they're going to do, then instead of telling them to okay do this or do that or do that again, uh, she'll simply just wait for them to to do whatever it is that she knows they will do at, at some point. Uh, and so, without interfering in them, making it as natural as possible, but having already, you know, researched this person's life, then she's able to to wait in the right place to capture the right shot at the right time to to fit the story. Uh, and then, in terms of making fictional film, fictional works, again, it's through her research and and through that kind of getting to know what what reality is that she's able to to put some of those real events into the script and make sure that. Uh, the, the, the reality of what she's talking about gets uh, gets portrayed through the fictional film. So, um, so very much so, <laughs> using these methods to merge film and fictional film and documentary, uh, therefore to kind of ask the question of actually, well, what is reality? You know, how how are we portraying reality, and what is reality? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, 那下一个问题其实是我自己的问题。不过在我问之前，你其实刚刚讲的话，有一些已经都稍微就是都都解答了一点。所以，只不过我还是先问一下，然后我再读那个英文的部分。那就是其实因为你有一些纪录片都是。就是花了，就是可能有十年的时间去拍摄。那就好像你刚才就是比较早的时候有提过，就是其实你你你呃，你创作背后的一个其中一个动机，就是想要寻找其他艺术家一个呃的作品里面一个不变的本质或者是核心。那就是呃，在你拍摄的过程中，你有没有就是？呃，找到自己的核心，然后就是你会不会在拍纪录片的时候，把自己的呃主体性也也拍进去呃片子里面？那我就用英文讲一下。嗯、um, ，Some of your documentaries took ten years to complete filming. Um, so as you suggested, an important motivation behind your work is to unveil the core of something that stays unchanged in an artist's life. Um, have you discovered your own core during the process of filming, and、uh, do you see your own subjectivity captured in your work? Thank you. Uh, eh, I've got a bit lost in your question. Just now, you flashed. Your question is. Oh, sorry. Um, you said that in your, 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 um, you said
会不会，然后在呃纪录片里面，你会不会把自己的主体性也放进去？这样，谢谢。嗯，哎，如果在纪录片来讲，我可以先解释一下我如何找到这些 artist 的核心好了，就是比如说。呃，那那个核心就跟刚刚刚刚可能有提到，我都在寻找一种真实嘛，或者是寻找核心嘛。那这个真实跟核心是什么？就是比如说，呃，因为刚刚讲到，我之所以拍纪录片，是我很想要理解另外一个创作者是怎么样在创作的，那个核心在哪里。那那个东西等于说是我们做创作的人有时候会有一种，哎，灵光乍现的时候。那我会很想要拍到那个什么叫做灵光乍现？灵光乍现这四个字好像一个一个形容词，可是它实际可能可以被被被抓到吗？被影片给抓到吗？这个是我那时候的一个想法。那比如说在林立珍老师这边，我觉得有两个关键，因为我常常会被问到说，你拍那么久到底什么时候要停？因为十年不是因为我自己设定的十年或我设定的几年，而是你拍的过程里面，你还觉得还没找到，你就会继续拍继续拍，然后等到找到的时候就觉得要停了这样。所以等于说，呃，比如说，例如在林玉珍老师里面，是两个东西让我觉得，哦，我拍到了。一个是有一天，呃，我载他去山上，他去采芒花，然后，呃，就是采芒花的时候，呃，他突然看到了整片风景嘛，然后他就不顾那个山路其实是很多车子有点危险，他就立刻把把那个他的他的笔记本摊开来，在路边画画。就是如果有看过片子的人就知道那一幕。那那一幕，呃，他他一 catch 到之后，他回去就开始画的那条所谓的他在关里面作品关里面要画的那条河。那对我来讲，那个那个那个 moment 就是他好像灵光乍现的时候，这是一点这样。那第二点就是，呃，我一直觉得剧场如何把剧场的能量给用影像给。给传达出来，因为通常我们看到一些剧场的表演的拍摄，通常是记录而已。那记录跟能够拍到它的能量跟精神，那个是不一样的。就是剧场它很像是呃演唱会，就是你一定得在现场，那个那个演员或舞者会给你投射很大的能量。那那个能量如何如何呃把用影像把它捕捉过来这样？那后来所以才会拍摄，等于说用 dance film 的方式去拍，呃，林立珍的一些作品，等于说把他的舞蹈当成是一个剧本或文本，然后用拍电影的方式去再诠释他的舞作，然后用那样的方式把它给拍出来，好像比较能够传达到他的能量这样。那当这两个东西都拍到之后，我就觉得，哎、欸，好像已经找到这个属于这个艺术家的本质了，就已经可以开始剪接啊或收尾这样。So, so first of all,、um, in terms of、uh, what Director Chen has talked about, you know, finding that unchanging core,、uh, or, or searching for reality,、uh, finding that that doesn't change in in particular artists, and, and what is it that、uh, inspires them to create? How do they create these these questions?、Um, what Director Chen said she was searching for in In doing such long-term documentaries, was actually looking to be able to capture on on film on camera those moments of,、um, in English, we say a flash of inspiration,、um, or, or kind of an aha moment, I guess, or, you know, yeah, a, a lightning bolt.、Um, actually, capture those moments where where inspiration comes, where inspiration hits, and that's because. For for an artist, those are kind of the the, the sacred moments, and、um, and one example that director Chen gives was when she was、uh, filming Ling Lijun and took her to、um, a mountain top to、uh, to to an area where、uh, lots of particular flowers were were blooming at the time.、Um, I'm not sure what flowers those were. You just said.、Uh, 芒草，芒花，芒去芒花，芒花，芒花，嗯，芒花 ，OK， 嗯，芒花草这样。Not sure of the English of 芒花 ，I'm afraid. Is that that's a native Taiwanese flower? I I presume is it? I think it it says it's a Chinese silver grass. A Chinese silver grass, okay. Um, and the 
the the event or the the moment, as it were, was uh, going up to this mountain top, and when then Ling Lijun saw this view, this view of the the, the Chinese silver graph, and and obviously from the mountain top, you got a quite a vast view. Just immediately, uh, kind of blocking out the environment and and not even necessarily taking care of all the cars that were on the road, just just running over to a vantage point opening the notebook and, and just starting to, to draw and actually that became the uh the, the starting point then for for a painting and then back at the 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 art studio you know, became a painting and so i think um director chen was saying that was a moment that she captured that that you can see in her documentary of this this kind of flash of inspiration and that's that's where it's come from and that that was one part the, the second thing um, that she's been looking to, uh, to to capture and to convey through her work was uh, thinking of theatre, actually how to portray the, the the kind of the energy and the power of theatre um, through through film, because up to you know, generally when the theatre productions are filmed, it's more of a just a documenting the night kind of thing, uh, just just recording it. Um, and actually, then you, you lose that energy. Director Chen was saying it's a bit like a concert, whether it's theatre or if it's live music. If you're there in the audience, there's a there's an energy and there's a, a power that that you have to be there to experience. Um, and, and what she wanted to do was to be able to actually find a way through film of, of capturing that same energy and power, which is something which she tried to explore again with Ling Li Jen and with the um, dance in, in particular, I think using dance film uh, and, and using lots of new techniques at least to, to try to capture that, that energy and power and convey that in a, in a new way through, uh, through film. So, so those were, were two of the um, two examples of, of why she spent so long trying to uh, trying to capture these these, <laughs> these these things in her work. So I think my maybe in the filmmaking process I can say it's a bit more like a human science way. Of course, I don't use human science to film films, but the way I do it is more like human science. That is, you have to respect the space. You don't do any of the shadows. You are a observer. 然后，呃，你观察到什么？那当然是对我自己来讲，我是在找那个本质嘛，所以我就比较不会。如果是以这样子的角度来讲的话，其实它会比较有一个呃所谓的拍摄伦理的问题，呃，就是拍摄伦理它的界限要在哪里？所以我不会跨过那个拍摄的伦理，就是我不会变成剧中的人，就是我不会用呃我自己加入。嗯，这个这个纪录片的方式，或者是我现身在纪录片里面，或者是我用任何的方式去去进入这个纪录片的方式，我比较不会采取这样子的方式去做拍摄。这样。Um, so this method of of making documentary, uh, is is very much trying to trying to capture the absolute reality. So so director Chen was saying, you know. In in trying to find that that core that that unchangeable core of of an artist, um, it means that she can't force anything, and, and she can't uh, kind of arrange things too much. She really does need to actually almost be uh, observing from the edge. And it's so you're saying it's almost a bit like um, uh, anthropological so, observation. Oh, thank you, Bu. <laughs> And anthro anthropological observation, um, in in the sense of not putting herself into the documentary, not putting herself into the story, not letting the uh, the, the the footage, the shots, being too influenced by her her own idea of what she wants to capture, and actually being able to to wait and to observe uh, and to wait and observe and and not interfere. Uh, and therefore, through that, you know, inevitably, that takes a very long time. But through that, then, then um, analyzing, <clears throat> analyzing, okay, what what have I captured here? 
and and what is it actually you know almost through all this material searching for that that uh, unchangeable core so uh 虽然我拍摄这么多的艺术家可能看起来很不一样就是有些是林立真是舞蹈的然后 大帐篷是剧场的，然后呃，就是如果耳朵有开关是声音艺术的，然后王文志呃，Mountain Spirit 它是比较是呃装置艺术的，虽然他们四个领域好像好像感觉很不一样，但是其实对我来说都有一个共通性是呃属于仪式的那个部分，好就是他们都在用他们的作品去创作一个呃仪式性的空间，可能是用舞
。好，谢谢。呃，下一个是婷莹的问题。呃，婷莹，你要不要自己自己来问 ？OK， 好。呃，导演好。嗯、呃、嗯、呃，就是想。导演刚刚有提到说，就是呃，过去其实是近几年的那个 VR 拍摄经验。那刚好我之前也有去台北电影节看了这部那个《留给未来的产业》。那想要请教导演的事情是，就是呃，可能请导演再多分享一下，就是在拍摄这部 VR 短片的时候的经验。然后另外一个是关于，就导演自己在创作过程中会觉得 VR 这个新的媒介，在跟过去传统。拍片方式的一个差异性，那导演自己在拍片的时候，会因为这个媒介的差异，有做一些呃创作上的改变或心态上的改变吗？好，谢谢。需要先翻译问题吗？还是我直接回答？啊、oh, ，OK， 对，对，对，嗯，听听 ，Do you want to read it？ 哦、uh, ，OK， 呃、uh, ，Thanks for sharing, Director Chen. And you just mentioned your experience in making VR film after image for tomorrow. And could you please talk a bit、um, more about that? And is there any difference in your creative process when you use this new medium of VR? Thank you. 呃，我觉得 VR， 我也是拍了。呃，留给未来的残影之后，我才开始研究 VR， 这样就是呃，为了拍 VR 而研究 VR。然后我自己的感觉是<咳> ，VR 它<咳> ，VR 它不是电影，它不能以电影的方式去看待它，因为我们现在会看到很多呃，在在国际或台湾都会看到很多 VR 的片子嘛。那很多呃 VR 的片子还是用电影的概念在拍 VR， 比如说它会剪接，或者是会有镜头跳来跳去。那对我来讲，呃，我比较不是这样子在看 VR。我觉得 VR 它是一个新的呃媒体，它就像是是一个新的载体，就是所以在电影里面的电影语言可能没办法直接复制到 VR 里面。那我们现在会把 VR 看作是一个类别，我自己是觉得比较可惜的，就是好像哦，纪录片、剧情片，然后短片、呃，实验电影或录像，然后 VR， 好像 VR 是一块一样，但是其实。应该不能这样子分，应该是 VR 它就是一块 ，VR 里面可以分成 VR 有剧情片、有纪录片、有实验电影、有录像、有什么，就是 VR 它是一个新的媒体，而不是一个新的类别这样。嗯 ，Director Chen was saying that in in her experience, it was only when she came to making、uh, After Image for Tomorrow this this VR project. In order to make this project, she she started to research. Uh, VR, and through that process, her perspective on VR is that it it's a whole new media,、um, and what what she found was a, a bit of a, a bit of a shame in some ways is that a lot of people at the moment still treat VR、uh, just as a a kind of an extra gadget、uh, and and use. The, the idea of making a movie and just kind of add VR into that,、uh, and so you, you know you make a movie with different、um, different shots and different cuts. It's just that it's it's in VR. Whereas what director Chen was suggesting was that actually treat VR as an entire new media, an entire new thing in itself. That within VR, you know, you could have documentary and and you can have all of these different different kinds of film within. VR、uh, and don't just use、um, kind of the past movie making ideas and, and and language and try to cram that into VR. Actually, you have to broaden your headspace and and treat VR as a whole new medium in itself, in in which、uh, you you can still fit all the other kind of you know、um, visual elements into it, documentary and film and other things. 所以，呃，等于说，刚好讲，刚好我自己是刚刚讲到，也会跨跨其他领域嘛，就是有一些剧场的拍摄经验啊，或者是剧场的参与经验。然后我自己觉得 ，VR 它比较，它与其说是一个关于时间的艺术，因为我们会说电影可能是一个比较关于时间的艺术嘛，我觉得 VR 比较是一个空间的艺术，你可以用空间去看待它，它有点像剧场一样，它可能更接近剧场，或者是。呃，当然它也是影像，但是它或许更接近剧场，是它在它的空间性，就是它借由呃你戴上 VR 以后，其实你是你是拥有完整的一个空间嘛。
那这个空间不会变，啊，就很像剧场一样，就是剧场它借由不管是灯光或布景或任何的变化，它去改变它的呃时间，然后它用空间去转换的时间这样。那 VR 其实也有点像这样的概念，就是 VR 你看到是整整个的空间，你没有一个 frame， 你没有一个镜头，所以你是整个空间。所以后来，比如说留给未来的餐饮，我就比较用呃剧场的思维在思考 VR， 就是如何用这个这个空间的转换跟演出的转换，然后去转换这个 VR， 而不是用直接剪接，因为有一些 VR 会直接剪接，比如说直接这一卡就换下一卡，或者是。直接用剪接的方式去融接，这样。但我自己比较是用空间跟剧场的概念在做这个 VR。In in director Chen's project, then, uh, in um after image for for tomorrow in this project, what she wanted to do was use, um, use her experience and and almost use a perspective of making theatre, and translating that into VR as opposed to. Make the, the perspective of making a film, uh, and actually, the really interesting thought that she shared on that the idea is that in, in film, film is kind of using time to to tell a story to represent something. You know, it's it's fairly linear, and and you you start and as time goes on uh, through the film, then things change and you watch them changing. Whereas uh, theatre is more about space. You, you, you're in this space. And things in the space change and tell the story through the space. And、um, VR, in that sense, then is is closer, in director Chen's opinion, to theatre than than to film. So what she wanted to make was something where, when when you when you put the VR on, you're in that particular space.、Uh, and so she would use things in the space to 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 change and transform to to.、Uh, Tell the story that she wanted to 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 represent what she wanted, as opposed to、um, what what some other people do, which is ha having more of a movie style, where you know, despite being in the VR, you know, this particular frame will then cut to the next part, which cuts to the next part.、Um, so so in that sense, director Jen saying that、uh, VR can can be almost closer to to theatre.、Uh, at, at least that was what she wanted to do with her. Um, after image for tomorrow was that that sense of using space、uh, and not just linear time. 那另外另外一个比较有趣的观察是说，呃，我当我们在看电影的时候，在看平面 frame 的电影的时候，其实我们投注的是我们的呃思考嘛，就是我们的脑袋投入进去的那个画框里面的故事，然后我们的精神进去的那个故事里面，然后我们获得了共鸣。可是，在 VR 有一个很有趣的是，呃，因为它是一个空间性的东西，等于你戴上 VR 以后，你的身体感是变成非常重要的，就是你的身体这件事情是，呃，很确实的存在的啊。比如说，呃，假如我们在电影里面会看到一些，呃，比如说俯瞰的镜头啊，镜头在上面，我们就呃，可能是有什么样的电影语言，或者是你 follow 一个人，你镜头 follow 一个人一直在走。呃，我们现在已经很容易区别，因为影像已经发展那么多年了，我们很容易区别哦。我们现在镜头跟着这个人走，我们不会去问这个镜头为什么跟着这个人走。呃，他 maybe 是一个人的呃视角啊 ，maybe 是一个很客观的、很客观的，就是跟着一个人走，我们不会去问是谁跟着这个人走。可是，在 VR 里面，因为这个媒材太新了，我们还对他还不习惯，所以变成说我们的身体感是很强烈的。就是今天当我 VR 的镜头在一个。top 的地方的时候，我会立刻觉得说，哎，我好像是一个鬼，或者是我是上帝，我为什么飘在这里看底下的人？就是那个身体感是很强烈的，或者是在 VR， 你如果说 VR， 你拍摄一个人一直跟着他走，观众就会立刻感觉说，哎，我是谁？我为什么要跟着这个人走？所以等于说，观众的本体、这个身体跟这个感官的一切，等于说在这个 VR 里面都是呃很新鲜的。那我觉得这个新鲜是这个阶段的时期啦，搞不好。呃，再发展个十年二十年，我们已经习惯 VR 以后，就不会有这些新鲜感了，就不会有这些发展了。对，所以我觉得是可以好好运用现在的这个新鲜，去发展很多属于这个媒体的语言。这样。嗯、um, ，What what director Chen is is expanding on in terms of、um, her observation of VR is that 
when compared to, to, to film, because film has been around for so long and we're all so uh, accustomed to it, actually, the example she gives is in a, in a film, if you have a shot that is following the protagonist of the film, following a character in the film, um, you know, we, we put our mind or we put our, our self into the, the movie, as it were, and we just kind of observe it. We won't necessarily ask the question, hey, why is this shot following this person? Um, who is following this person? Uh, you know, what's what's going on in that sense? You know, we, we're, we're so used to movies now, the different angles and shots and things going on that we almost, we, we just observe and it's it's normal. Whereas with VR, it's not just you put your your mind and your kind of uh, your thoughts into the movie. Actually, your whole body becomes important. Uh, and you're aware of yourself and, and your body when, when you're in the VR space. So if you're in VR and you find that you're up above looking down from a really high place, then you, you suddenly think, who am I? And what am I doing up here? Am I a ghost? Am I a god or something? What's going on? Or similarly, if if the VR angle is that you're following someone, then you immediately ask yourself, who am I and why am I following this person? What's going on? So director Chen is saying that this is partly due to the fact that VR is so new and we're not used to it. We're not so accustomed to it. Uh, and she thinks that will last for around about 10 or 20 years. So so it's, um, it's important right now to actually make use of this uh, freshness of VR and <laughs> kind of use it, experience it and play with it while while it's still fresh for people before the audience get numb to, to some of the, uh, the, the kind of the newness uh, and the, the new areas of creativity that, that VR gives. Okay, thank you.呃下一个关注的问题那他的问题是比较理论性的那我尝试呃翻译一下呃那你刚才提到就是你会用一个记录片的方式来拍摄剧情片那呃就是这样的做法有没有一个比较呃就是有没有一个呃叫这个有没有
。那里面除了里面除了那个女记者以外，其他全部都是素人演员，就是有些是真的是游民，然后有些是素人的状态来演演这个片子这样。嗯。Um, so in terms of documentary making, then then、uh, yes, director Chen is very much.、Uh, Observing and and looking to make sure she doesn't control reality,、uh, you, you know, it's it's, I guess you could call it invisible camera. It, it's not interfering with what's going on,、um, but in terms of film, actually, what director Chen was saying was, you know, you do come back to the question of what is real, and what is reality, and there's a lot of discussion. That does take place and and can continue to take place about that question. You know what what actually is reality,、um, and particularly as boundaries between film and documentary、uh, have become more and more blurred. Actually, that's something which director Chen has has almost intentionally looked to do herself in her own work is blurring of those boundaries between between documentary and between film. Of course.、Um, There will be very obvious, you know, very obvious documentary and very obvious fiction film.、Um, but she gave two examples. What one of the films、um, being bundled? The example in, that she gave of the film bundled, Wu Jiao Ami,、um, is that the, the the homeless protagonist was actually、um, a, a homeless person in in Taiwan, and actually, apart from the female、um, journalist. In the film, everyone else was—they were either, you know,、uh, real homeless or they were just just everyday people. They weren't professional actors,、uh, and in that sense, that was one way of of actually blurring those boundaries between documentary and between film.、Uh, and the, the the second example that director Chen mentioned, Chen Dao Yan, you, 刚刚提到另外一个我们我们没有播放的的片。那个可以再提一次吗？呃，恍惚与凝视的练习 ，in in trance we gaze。OK， one more time。呃，恍惚与凝视的练习，啊，恍惚，恍惚与凝视的练习。恍惚。呃，英英文英文片名是 in trance， in trance we gaze。OK， in trance we gaze。So that one。Uh, that that was the second example that director Chen gave of her intentionally blurring the boundaries between documentary and film,、uh, and almost throwing that question of what is reality,、uh, you know, up into the air. Thank you, thank you. 那呃，比如说对我来讲，呃，像是《流浪神狗人》好了，《流浪神狗人》里面，呃呃，就等于说我我试图找到一个，当然一直在讲说。呃，可能我电影关注的是小人物的状态，或者是人基本生存的状态，那或者是关于仪式、关于信仰、关于宗教的这些题目，这样。那这些题目里面，呃，就是所谓的呃真实，并不一定是写实，呃，它这两个是有一点点差别的。那比如说，真实是包含我们看不到的空间的东西，比如说。在《流浪神狗人》里面有一段是神明起舞嘛，就是有三太子，好像那个神 God， 就是呃里面有很多的神像，那那东那些东西是看不到的，对。然后有一幕是神明在一个废墟里面开始起舞了，那那个看起来是很不真实的，很很不写实，好了，哎，应该说很不很不写实，但是其实对我来说那是那是真实。In in the film then. Uh, Good Man Dog.、Um, Director Chen was was very interestingly talking about,、uh, I guess, the, the difference between perhaps physical reality and and reality. And, and so while that that film is talking about、uh, issues of belief and religion and 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 spiritual awareness and issues like that, she was saying, for example, there's a scene where、uh, there's the It's it's kind of like you're seeing the spirit world,、uh, where the、um, Taiwanese、uh, god or spirit is is, is there. And it, it, in terms of, it's it's not it, it doesn't feel very real. It's it's not you know physically real. And yet,、um, 
what she's representing of the spiritual world, Director General saying, is very real to her. And actually, it's just just because we can't see it, then doesn't make it unreal. And so, um, it for her that that difference between physical reality and reality is really interesting. It's something that she explores in in her work. So, I just thought of the director of the show, he actually talked to the young people, I don't know what he said, but he said the young people was like, it's not the original thing, but the meaning is like, you don't have to look at the film to make the film, you have to look at the life to make the film. He actually gave the young people a suggestion. 一个一个一个建议这样，那那个东西的意思是因为我觉得，呃，在现在很多的影像、很多的电影、很多的其实到处都是嘛。那在呃，在我我大学的年代，可能没办法看那么多电影，也没有那么多，也没有 internet， 也没有那么多的呃影像可以看的时候，其实我的灵感很多的，等于说想法或灵感的来源是透过。呃，书本、小说或者是什么，但是现在可能是透过影像。那所以，呃，等于说不要，我觉得这句话我也一一直在放在心里面，就是你不要看着电影去创作电影，而是要看着生活去创作电影。这样。There's a a, a famous um a famous phrase from director the new wave director Hou Xiaoxian, which director Chen is. Is is sharing with us right now, which which he said, Hou Xiaoxian was encouraging younger people, particularly younger people in film, younger directors, don't don't try to get your inspiration from watching other films. Uh, actually, get your inspiration from life, from real life, and that's something which, for director Chen, she was saying is is she's she's kept that idea in mind. She tries to keep coming back to that. Um, that advice, if you will, because when when she was young, when she was starting out, actually, you know, the, she didn't have that much opportunity to to watch so many films as as now. Uh, back then, there was no internet. Um, whereas compared to nowadays, you know, you can watch anything you like anytime you like. Uh, and and what she wants to do is to to not get sucked into that actually, but to keep this advice in mind all the time actually. Take inspiration from life, not just from other people's work. In that sense. So, uh, I think I can record a film. Actually, for me, it's quite fortunate. It means that in recording a film, I can observe a lot of things. And this will become my DNA. To be able to record a film, it means that in recording a film, I can observe a lot of things. And this will become my DNA. To be able to record a film, it means that in recording a film, I can observe a lot of things. And this will become my DNA. Is is grateful for uh, and feels feels privileged to, to be able to do because it's it's exactly that it's being able to take inspiration from real life and from from other people's real lives and document it and actually that feeds into creative inspiration for for her other work as well. Okay. <laughs> 谢谢导演。呃，那呃 ，I I think I uh we we have Rosella here, so maybe perhaps uh if 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 you would like to ask a question. 呃呃，我们有一位就是专门研究呃电影还有戏剧的老师，那或者可能请他呃问一个问呃就是提问。Rosella, if you are not, you don't have any questions. It's not a uh, compulsory. Great. <laughs> Good to see you. Welcome, Rosella. Don't forget to turn your mic on. Oh yes, you are muted. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. I was, uh, I was trying to figure that one out. Thank you uh, for uh, um, this event. Actually, my question actually is uh, very simple. I was, I watched the. The documentary uh, about the moving tent, mm. and um, as somebody who works on theater, and I had read um, about um, Sakurai Taito um, and um, Taiwan Haibiza before, so I wanted to ask um, how uh, directed director Chen get into contact with this group, 
and uh, how did she get eventually to decide to make a film about them? Thank you. Okay, so um, Rosella 刚刚问就是说她有看到呃、uh, The Moving Tent 这个纪录片，然后呃就是对这个很有兴趣，也是想问你呃怎么样有先接触这个团体，然后为什么会决定要呃记录他们，把他们拍成纪录片？呃，我我一开始。跟拍林立珍一模一样，就是林立珍，我是二两千年看了他的舞蹈，然后留下很深刻的印象。然后呃，那个海鼻子就是帐篷樱井大照，我也是看他那个时候他在日本有一个剧团嘛，野战之月剧团。那野战之月剧团在呃九零年代也是差不多两千年，详细的年份我有点忘记了，要查。就是他第一次呃借由拆式剧团的中桥导演引介来台湾做了一个演出。那那个时候是在一个呃提防的外面，二重疏洪道的提防外面。那那个时候台北市整个台北市还没有现在这么的呃所谓的公园化好了。现在台北市已经几乎找不到呃比较是荒野的地方了，就是到处比如说提防外面都是都是都是公园，在那个时候都还是类似比较荒野的城地方这样。那我第一次在那边看帐篷剧。那看完以后我，我我非常受震撼。他全剧是用日文在演出的，但是这个剧本里面就是很魔幻写实。他在讲一个核废料的事情，就是核废料，呃，它完全是虚构的。然后核废料到了一个地方，然后呃呃，该、呃、怎么办？一一群在底层的人如何面对这件事情？这样，然后剧名就叫做《出核害记》，出就出去的出，核就是核能的核，害就是害怕的害，就出核害记这样的一个剧。那我看了以后，因为呃，大照樱井大照的呃帐篷剧，它最后都会把幕给打开，就是它舞本来是舞台是封闭的嘛，我们看到本来是一个舞台啊，有布景啊，有什么，但是它的剧的最后都会点火，然后点火的时候会唱歌，然后唱歌之后会把它的它的后面的幕给打开，那幕打开的时候，我是完全是被整个撞击到了，因为幕打开的时候是一个呃。等于说是台北市的一个呃灯光的市景，一个都市的景，远远远远远的，就是透过河你看得到城市。那那一瞬间，我觉得呃，它是等于说把戏剧跟写实给融在一起了。就是你不是在看一个戏，你是在看一个很真实的东西。然后你觉得现在你看的剧是真实吗？还是你你生活的地方才是虚构的？其实我们在戏里面看到的是真实的，就是这个核废料的事情没有被处理，这些人他们过的生活是怎么样，这个才是真实的。当我们打开这个帐篷的时候，你看到的那些你所谓你以为生活在那里的东西才是假的，就是它完全翻转了我对真的假的、呃、真实的虚构的一个界限。这样，所以那一次看完以后，我就完全被震撼到这样。然后后来等到二零零四年的时候，他要呃也是中桥导演引介他来，就是不断的在往返台湾跟日本有一些呃戏剧上的交流。那二零零四年他打算在台湾成立呃台湾海鼻子剧团嘛，那那个时候我就呃一部分以类似参与者的身份进入这个剧团，然后一部分以拍摄的方式进入这个剧团这样。那其实他所有的成员都是来来去去，也是非常的有机的，就是大家都有别的工作啊，然后参与这个剧团，比较是这样子的形式。嗯、um, <coughs> ，So in、uh, Director Chen first came into to contact、um, with this team, it was when the they came from Japan when when the The director came from Japan to Taiwan in the year around about the year 2000. She was saying to do outdoor tent theatre, and at that time in Taipei City,、uh, there was still quite a lot of just open space that hadn't that, that was that was left.、Um, it, it, now nowadays, as you're saying, there's a lot more parks around. You know, the empty space has generally been turned into. Parks, it's it's controlled, as it were.、Um, whereas back then, the the tent theater was set up more in just a an area of of wasted space, and、um, 
and and she went to a watch and the the theme of the story was about nuclear waste and how nuclear waste were impacted on um the, the people that it got dumped on essentially uh, and the the kind of the fear and, and and that that problem that issue uh and what what she said that that really opened up her mind that really was a, a big a flash of inspiration moment for her was at the end you know uh, throughout the whole um story you're you're watching things on a stage and it's contained in the stage and the final part is is where there's a fire and then the tent is opened up and when it was opened out the view she could see the view of of Taipei city behind there and and suddenly it's like the whole story which had been fantasy on a stage there being acted out became a reality because it it was right there in the space that 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 she existed in and actually therefore this issue actually was a real issue as well and and it was reality for these people and so that moment um that moment of the the, the, the kind of the, the curtain opening up of suddenly placing this story in the reality of of where director chen was was it, it flipped up that whole idea of what is fiction and what is real uh, and that was a that was a um kind of a, a big moment a big uh, kind of mind opening for for director chen right then and that led her to um certainly to to, to keep to stay interested uh, in in this group and in this particular thing and so in 2004 uh it was again it was a, a taiwanese director which invited this um japanese director to come to Taiwan to start a uh, a theatre company in in Taipei and that's something which director Chen said she wanted to be involved in partly involved in and partly to to, to document the whole process uh, and the people who were part of then that new theatre group mostly were not professional you know they all had other jobs and they would come in and um and and join this 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 theatre group. Thank you. Um, uh, well, can we that <laughs> Um, I, I will. Um, thank you, Rosella, for asking this question. It's really fascinating. I want to follow up her um, question on the uh, moving tent because I noticed in the uh, in the film there's um what quite a big part was a. a taking place and also involved in the uh, social protest for Le Sheng, uh, uh, um, I don't know how to say Le Sheng Liao Yang Yuan. Um, Le Sheng Liao Yang Yuan. Yeah, I, I, um, so there's a kind of a social element in that particular uh, film as well. So I was just wondering how did she um, how did she get involved in that particular thing? And how does she combine social issues into the uh, 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 that particular work? It, was it because um, um, Haibi's uh, theater was socially very uh, active or something else? Okay, we will draw one way. Just follow Rosella the nigga Wenti, she sure. 在, 在, uh, 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 moving tank, little, uh, you, you, change it out, uh, Lushen Liang Yuan, you, uh, Liang Yuan, Jiu Yuan Chu Lito, Biao Yan, Gum, Hayo, uh, Taman Dang Shu, the Isia, Bing Huan, Dang, uh, Tan Yu, uh, Budan Shi Yan Chu Yu, Zai, Zai, uh, Dang Guan Jung, the, the Sui, Chisi, Ni, the, Zi Budan Lito, Sui, and Sai Jang, Ju Chang, Kashi, uh, 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 
海鼻子这个剧团，它自己的一个本身就是跟呃社会议题有强大的连接的一个剧团，这样哈，就是呃包含在日本的时候都是，因为樱井大照早期就是有参与呃那个时候反安保，就是美日安保条约，然后那个时候日本呃大学生都会去参与那些抗议活动嘛，那帐篷剧是在那样子的状态下而形成的，就是他们可以到处去演出，然后自给自足的演出这样。所以很大一部分，呃，樱井大照导演就就呃，平常就是非常关注，不管是呃社会议题也好，国际情势也好，或整个亚洲的整个整体的状态也好，这个都是他非常关注的，以及人在这样子的状态下如何生存这件事情也是他非常关注的。所以本来就是呃，樱井大照他他所关注的议题。嗯。So in answer to this question. Director Chen was saying that actually the the theatre company Haibizu um, was originally very connected to and interested in social issues, and that that was part of what the the theatre company um, what 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 they were involved in and motivated by. Um, so actually, as well, not not just then in Taiwan. Actually, the original Japanese director in Japan um, was very much motivated by. Uh, and and interested in social issues, which was part of the reason Director Chen said for the whole um, tent theatre idea that of being able to go anywhere and and take the, the the message or the story out and and um and so that was something which, again which attracted her to the High Visa Theatre Company in in Taiwan was this very strong connection with with social issues, social movements, uh, social conscience, I should say uh, how. You know how how do people um, how do they survive? How do they cope uh, in you know, environments where they're they're oppressed or they come up against big big problems, big trouble? So, uh, 等于说，樱井大照他二两千年到两千零四年来台湾呃往返的时候，其实刚好就是刚刚讲的呃，乐生疗养院的一个。呃，运保留运动嘛，那那个时候正是如火如荼在在抗争的时候。那他他他里剧团里面的很多成员也都也都是参与了那个保留运动，哦，并不是因为剧团而去参加那个保留运动，而是本来这些成员很大一部分就是有一些就是有参与了乐生保留的运动这样。那所以很很呃，就是很快的，就是连接上呃，樱井大照也会关注呃乐生的保留运动。那这个对他来讲是一个很好的利基点，就是呃，我为什么要在台湾做帐篷这件事情？他并不是只是为了要演演一出戏而已，而是呃，他对于他来讲是，你为什么站在这里，要演什么，给什么人看，我们要产生什么样的对话空间，这个都是他在做戏剧的时候在在思考的部分。嗯。嗯。So in terms of The year 2000 to the year 2004, uh, when this Japanese director was uh, regularly visiting Taiwan, actually the the, the issue of um, the le le sen that's uh, old people. Sanatorium. Probably Sorry. sanatorium. Yes. Okay. Um, the the issue was of of this place being closed and a campaign to keep it open, and what Director Chen was saying was a lot of people who were involved in the campaign or and and, and protests uh, were actually involved in that first and, and then involved with the um, the High Beza Theatre Company because the High High Beza Theatre Company was uh, w was also involved in in that project it was it was the the people being involved in the campaign and the protest first as it as opposed to being um kind of dragged in by the theater company in that sense which makes it made it very real um and the other point that director chen mentioned was even just the idea of having a tent a, a tent theater was actually is is because the the director wanted to think about the whole idea of um, for, an, for an audience, why are you in this place uh, telling this story to this group of people? 
you know what's what's the meaning behind the space that we're in right now in this location telling this particular story and the the tent being a way of controlling and managing that in a way that um it, it, you can you know right from the outset you, you think about that that question uh, and you can design it in a way which has the maximum impact as opposed to just any old, um you know any old space 所以他的剧团等于是先到现在都还维持了一个所谓比较激进的做法就是他并不是我作为一个导演我作为一个剧团我hire这些人或者是我付钱给剧团的演员 就是我必须要有我自己要做什么，我才站在那个舞台上，而不是反过来的，就是哦，我今天已经写好一个剧本，我找一些演员来演，他那个关系并不是这样的，他是反过来的一个比较激进的做法。嗯， um, so in terms of the the, the way that the uh, the this Japanese director works is not to write a script and then to hire professional actors to come in and and fit into the script and the story is actually it's it's the members of the the, the theatre company they actually you know you have to actually sacrifice something you have to give something to be able to be in, involved in this you have to put yourself into uh the into the, the story of the campaign you know what is it that that you you want to do what is it that you want to say uh, and it's almost like the opposite way around from from a, a traditional just simply write the script and hiring people to to act it. Mm. No, 所以 on the flip side, um, despite being very based in in real life reality and real social issues, the the scripts then that this particular uh, the the high beads of the company um, that the director will write are actually quite quite fantastical, and, and he'll use um, fantasy to almost portray the message in an even clearer and um, harder hitting way. Uh, so. So the issues, the, the ideas are all very real, um, but the way that it's portrayed through the script is it, almost quite fantastical. Okay, okay. fantastic. Um, thank you so much. I have got, I, Xiaoyi, can I ask another question? Of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, let me uh, uh, use Chinese. I'll ask shorter uh, question. You just said that the bomb attack happened a lot in the 90s. In the 90s, in the 90s, in the 90s, I think that the Taiwan culture is very interesting and the experience of the film is very strong. 为什么文化上这么样的精彩,电影这么的低落?我就问一下很快的问题. Um, uh, you mentioned several times about the cultural explosion in the 1990s, which when I look back, it was really exciting period. But why the contrast of a really low and uh, depressing uh, 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 film industry? So, in her view, can she uh, elaborate a little bit on this? Uh,我我自己比较会取舍这两个部分是嗯呃，台湾早期电影的发展有它的脉络嘛，有片场制度啊，有它的工业啊，有台湾自己的工业，比如说台语片啊，或者是怎么样，呃，就是餐厅电影
就是很粗浅的，我这是很粗略的，呃，就是很很粗略的分。那有那等到呃，等于说在刚刚一直提到的解严后的这个大爆炸，我觉得这个比较是属于创作本质的部分，哈，就是它它比较属于创作者的文化的或者是艺术的各个层面的一个。一个等于说解禁之后的整个整个爆炸，哈，那这个东西是比较属于本质性的，它并不属于比如说产业的这一块，哈，那当当然这些东西到了新电影的时候，呃，侯导啊、杨德昌导演他们早期也一起干嘛，或者是整个文化圈是整个一起的，都在呃为了台湾的这一块爆炸的文化在在前进，或者说在做自己的作品，是是这样的状况。那当然，呃，台湾电影的大环境的没落，那个是另外一个比较，我会觉得比较是产业的部分的问题，嗯、就是，呃，当然它需要大量的资金嘛，那它需要很多的钱才能拍电影，但是，呃，呃，这个是比较是产业的。可是，在文化上，我觉得台湾当时的电影并没有，呃，并没有低迷，就是它虽然拍的人很少，然后虽然说，呃，可能票房不好。但是他整个在所谓探讨电影本质，好了，电影语言或电影这个艺术该怎么样，其实也是在爆炸的。比如说侯导啊、杨德昌导演或这些新电影的导演，我觉得他们还是在爆炸的。他并没有受这方面的产业所谓比较是产业部分的影响，这样我自己是会这样子觉得。嗯嗯嗯。So in terms of a, a, a cultural explosion in the 1990s.、Um... Post martial law period in Taiwan, then、um, what Director Chen is is suggesting is actually that was much more of a a creative, a cultural, and artistic、uh, an explosion of expression, and that that didn't necessarily translate into the film industry as a as a kind of mature industry that you know the there were established companies that made films in a particular way、uh, and required. Large budgets to to do so,、uh, and and the, the the kind of the decline of the established film industry、um, was 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 another thing that actually was not so that you know that that wasn't necessarily part of this creation、uh, explosion of 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 creativity of of culture art and of expression, and that actually while the 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 industry, the film industry itself, was in decline. That the kind of commercial part side of it was very much in decline. Then, what director Chen suggests is that creatively,、uh, it, it wasn't in decline. Creatively, actually, the the film scene was also exploding. It's just that the number of films being produced and released was was much much lower.、Um, but actually, the the directors of that time. Were, were 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 you know very much part of this、uh, this new cultural creative ex- explosion.、Um, it, it's just that issues to do with the film industry itself meant that it, you know there were so few films that it it wasn't a high point in Taiwan's film industry as it were.、Hmm. Okay,、um, I think we are just. <laughs> you know, running out of time. So thank you so much,、uh, Director Chen. You know, this is amazing talk. May I ask the audience to switch on your microphone and camera, put your hands together. Maybe we should say a big thank you to Director Chen. Thank you.